our journey along the north coast of Molokai begins here, in Halaba Valley, on the northeast end of the island. Our transportation will be two-man, 18-foot rubber Metzler Riverstar kayaks. It takes only a few minutes to unfold, inflate, and rig these boats. They weigh just 64 pounds, but are amazingly durable. Actually, for bouncing off rocks and coming up on rock beaches and whatever, they're sturdier than a fiberglass kayak. These kayaks are steered with foot rudders. Group leader John Gray says they are ideal for open ocean paddling. It's very important, uh, especially in an inflatable boat, to have a rudder. Uh, that way, where you can control the wind instead of having the wind control you. This journey will require four kayaks carrying men and women of different ages. John's wife, Christy, will prepare the meals over four days, and she double-checks her supplies. Bill Capuni will help ferry the supplies in his whaler and act as a support boat. It is midday and John gives last-minute advice before setting out. Everybody is personally responsible for the pressure in their air chambers and their rudder lines, okay? Does your boat, you, you gotta kick the tires. The ocean off the north coast of Molokai is unpredictable. Foul weather can come without warning. We are lucky. It is summer, and the conditions are perfect. The swells are fairly small today, and the kayakers have no problem paddling out. They turn west along the north coast of Molokai. This coastline is magnificent. The massive sea cliffs rise from 1,000 to 3,000 feet, making them among the highest in the world. From here to Alaska, there is no land. In the distance, the kayakers have sighted Papalaua, truly one of the beautiful valleys on the planet. This is nice. Kapuni has gone ahead. Here in the bay known as Hakaano, he will lay some nets in hopes of adding some fish to the evening's dinner. See if you catch some Ananoi, Mary Manini, yeah. Oh, Vicky. Not more likely this for uh, some fish we can pick up today and it lays for a couple of hours and, and, uh, and cook it tonight for dinner. Bill's partner, Jim, will forage with a spear. The kayakers arrive at Hakaano, neighbor to Papalaua Valley. This will make an excellent campsite, complete with nature shower. This little cove is cool, and the lobster make their homes on the rock bottoms, which is nearly 20 feet deep, no more than 20 yards offshore. You didn't come through there. Bill has hauled in his nets with the makings of a fine luau on the Boulder Beach. Look how colorful those are. Yeah, it tastes really good too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We will hike Papalaua to see the waterfall in the back of the valley. This valley is narrow, and because its walls are so steep, sunlight is not constant, leaving it dark and damp. 
Like most of the valleys on the north coast of this island, it was once heavily populated by Hawaiian taro farmers. But at the turn of the century, the population began to dwindle. Today, Papaloa is deserted, and the taro farms are overgrown with vegetation. There is no trail to the thousand foot waterfall in the back of this valley, but the stream bed will lay the course. Kukui nuts, another, uh, uh, another tree introduced, you know. They gotta be drier than this, but you see how oily it is inside. It's really not edible, but it made a candle. Oh, it is. Yeah. It's real, it's real greasy. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. The pool under the waterfall offers an inviting reward for a long hike. Hawaiian legend has it that mo'o, evil water spirits, would loom in pools such as these. It became custom to offer a rock wrapped in a tea leaf before entering the water. Morning has come, and we break camp just after dawn. One paddler has risen early and rigged a sail on his boat with a few pieces of bamboo and a rain poncho. Another day offers another adventure. It is time to leave Haka'ano and head west down the north coast of Molokai. The farther we move west, the higher the sea cliffs get. Again, the conditions are perfect, and the paddle is easy with the following sea. 